All right, I got another build video here for you. Now, this is going to be a little interesting because I'm pretty positive that I have absolutely broken the game this time. I'm not even kidding. The spell is working great, and oh my gosh. <laughs> All right, guys, let's get back into it. Holy crap. So this is officially New Game Plus 5. We have made it to another playthrough of the game, and I wanted to try something different this time around, and boy, am I super excited that I did. I'm running what I'm calling the Plague Doctor build, or some sort of poison build, as it were. I have never done poison before. It is something that I've always been curious about. I knew that blood was really, really good, but poison is awesome. I am having such a fun time. I got into the game, went to New Game Plus 5, and within 30 minutes, I had killed every single boss in Limgrave and the majority of all the other mini bosses in the dungeons. This is gonna be a build you're gonna wanna use. It is really, really, really good. It does blood loss damage and poison buildup damage, and between the two of those, it absolutely wrecks. So we're gonna go over the talismans, the summons, the weapons, the armor that we're wearing, all that good stuff and we are going to get you guys geared up and ready to rock for new game plus because let's be honest after seeing this build you are going to want to try it out it is the best build that i have done to date and considering you guys really love the last build that i did with the sword and board tank spank build this is going to be next level let me get you right into it let's start out with the talismans so the first talisman we're going to be using is the taker's cameo now this is going to restore your hp upon defeating enemies now the reason that i wanted to use this is because I wanted the idea of this build to be a poison build that feeds off of the death of your enemies. You're a plague doctor. It just kind of feels good. So in this build, you are going to find that you are going to stay alive a lot longer because you have talisman that are going to give you health as you are doing things in this build. So the taker's cameo is going to restore that HP upon defeating enemies. So the more enemies you defeat, the more health you're going to get back, the less Estus you're going to use. It works out great. Coming in at our number two slot, we're going to be using Millicent's Prosthesis. Now this is just going to be a fantastic talisman for all around boost to stats. You're going to boost your dexterity and you're gonna raise attack power with successive attacks. So once you get two or three attacks going, it's gonna raise your attack power, which is gonna allow you to kill faster, get more health from the previous talisman we just mentioned, and this is also gonna boost your dexterity, and that's gonna be helpful because this is a dex arcane and a little bit of faith build if we're being 100% honest. For our number three slot talisman, we are gonna be using the Godskin Swaddling Cloth. I had actually never seen this talisman before, and this is going to give you HP based on successive attacks. So the more attacks that you are doing, not only are you raising your attack power from the previous talisman, but you're also going to be restoring your health. And on top of the very first talisman we mentioned, the Taker's Cameo, this is gonna stack with that, even giving you more health. So this is a really awesome talisman for this build, especially because it stacks with the Taker's Cameo. I love it. It really helps me save my Estus, especially later into New Game Plus. It's been an absolute lifesaver. And the last talisman that is going to take our number four slot here in our build is going to be the Kindred of Rot's Exaltation. This is going to cause you to get more attack power when poisoning or rot is in the vicinity. And considering most of our attacks and our spells are going to cause poisoning, you are going to get your attack power increased quite a lot. And with Millicent's Prosthesis raising your attack power with successive attacks, the more attacks you pull off, the more you're poisoning. The more you're poisoning, you are going to get more attack power. So it's basically a giant snowball of raising your attack power over and over and over again. And it just makes you do so much damage. So with that being said, that's going to be our four talismans we're going to be using. Let's go to the weapons so you can see what you're going to be using to slay your enemies in this build. Now we will start with the weapon that you're currently seeing on screen. And that is going to be the Serpent Bone Blade at plus 25. This is going to have a strength scaling of E, but a deck scaling of B, which is pretty good. And with the physical damage at 294 plus 298, it is actually a pretty hard hitting weapon. And it's not even the fact that it hits super hard, it's the fact that it hits really, really fast. It is a 66 rating for causing poison buildup, and at the rate that you are hitting, and as fast as this can slice back and forth, you are actually poisoning people very, very quickly which once again as you get them poisoned all of your talismans take effect and you start just stacking that damage up over and over and over again the ash of war is where this particular weapon shines with its double slash ash of war you can get those attacks off really really fast 
and like I said, build up that poison. This is a really, really great weapon for this, and you don't have to put an Ash of War on it because the one that it has is absolutely phenomenal for what we want it to do in this build. Now, the other weapons that we are going to be using for this build are going to be two of the Scavenger's Poison Curve Sword at plus 25. I have put Poison Moth Flight on one of these Scavenger's Curve Swords because it does a lot of damage and with the poison being something we're trying to continue to do in this build, it really poisons really, really fast and quite well. This weapon is going to have a poison buildup of 133 with the Poison Moth Flight Ash of War, and it's also going to cause blood loss buildup. So there will be times when you will get both procs at the same time, and there will be massive chunks of the enemy's health that will just fall away. And with the attack pattern that you can use for jump attacks, having two of these weapons, you hit so hard and you deliver so much poison and blood loss to the enemy, it really is broken. I could not believe how much damage I was doing in New Game Plus 5 and how easy this felt for me to get through the game as I was using these weapons. These have very quickly become some of my favorite weapons to use in the entire game. And like I said, the dual wielding, it just makes this game easy mode like you would not believe. So those are the weapons we're going to be using. Now we also have one more thing we need to talk about before we move on, which is the Dragon Communion Seal at plus nine. Now we are using a few incantations. Like I said before in the video, we are a plague doctor. So we're going to be using a few incantations that have to do with poison, with blood, that kind of stuff. And it's just going to help us out with the arcane scaling when we use this particular seal rather than the other ones. This is an arcane and dexterity build with a little bit of faith thrown in so we can use some of these incantations, but this seal is the one we're gonna be using. We're not actually using any dragon communion incantations, but like I said, because of the arcane at S scaling, we are gonna throw this one on and it's just gonna help our spells hit a little bit harder. Speaking of spells, we are gonna be using some incantations in this build, so let's go over those very, very quickly. The first one we are going to be using is going to be Poison Mist. Now, Poison Mist, in my opinion, is more of a passive spell. So what I mean by that is when you put it out and you put a big cloud of poison mist around a group of people, it very slowly ticks down their health and it also helps you get that poison damage off once you hit them with a few of your poison weapons. It's just going to help the process move a little quicker overall. And I think with the ticking damage, it just helps out kill enemies a lot quicker. So the next one we're going to be using is going to be Swarm of Flies. I love this spell, especially with the arcane portion of this build. It does a really, really nice chunk of damage, and you can cast it really quickly. So overall, this is a great spell for if you got a bunch of enemies running at you, you cast it a few different times, it forms an area of effect right around the infected, and it can also hit more people in an area. So I like this spell a lot. It does a great job of the whole, we're a plague doctor, we have the poison clouds and the swarm of blood flies. It's just, it's a good spell overall. So the next one is gonna be Flame Grant Me Strength, which obviously is gonna give us our physical attack power boost, and then Golden Vow, which is gonna increase our attack as well for ourselves and our allies. So these are gonna be the four spells that we're gonna be using in this build. If there are any other incantations that you guys think should go in this build, let me know. I'd love to add them in just to tool around with them, see which ones would really, really min-max this build, but these are the four that I'm using. All right, now let's talk Ashes. So I did not wanna use the typical Ashes that you've seen in a bunch of other videos of summons that everybody is using. So I went with somebody that I had never used before and I assumed because she was a perfumer that that would go well with the build that we are doing with all the poison and the blood flies and all that stuff. So perfumer Trisha at plus 10, I was pleasantly surprised. I'll be hundred percent honest with you. Not only does she do a very large area of effect fire spell, but she also will give you a gold sphere that makes you impervious to one attack. This was a really pleasant surprise because on New Game Plus, especially New Game Plus 5, people are starting to hit a little bit more hard than I would like them to. So Perfumer Trisha gives you that one extra hit of damage that you can take so you can continue to deal out your own damage. So she's a great support Ashes. Once again, she is support. She is not strong. You are going to want to tank all of the damage that is coming and let her be a support character rather than put her out as a tank summon and then watch her get completely annihilated. She's really, really good if she plays in the background, cast her spells, use her spells on you. I was very pleasantly surprised with this one. And the next summon we're gonna be using is going to be the Jellyfish. That's right, we're gonna be using the Spirit Jellyfish at plus 10. This, once again, is another support Ashes. It is a little bit more tanky, 
then Perfumer Trisha, but you are not going to want to use this summon as a tank. You're going to want to use it to support you in the background. The reason being is this summon's entire purpose is to poison the enemy. It's really, really good in a very long fight because it'll sit back and just shoot poison at the enemy over and over again, eventually poisoning the enemy. But pairing that with our poison build, it's going to allow us to poison the enemy faster. Now, it does have a few melee capabilities. It'll hit some enemies when they get too close with its tentacles, but it definitely is not a tank. I like this summon because it allows me to get in the fray while receiving some additional help every now and again from poison that shot at an enemy or from an enemy I wasn't even hitting becoming poisoned. So this is a really good one if you're looking for a support for this build. So the next summon we're going to be using in our last number three spot is Depraved Perfumer Carmon. I'm really excited about this one because I've never used him before and he is extraordinarily good. Not only does he have some of the moveset that Perfumer Trisha had with the giant wall of fire that goes out that you see a lot of perfumers using in the game but he can also throw little tiny bolts of perfume that turn into fire bolts and hit the enemy in rapid succession and he can heal himself so he is really really good he is great against bosses he's great against npcs i only have him at plus seven so you're not going to see his full potential in this video but at plus 10 i imagine he is an absolute beast he also throws out a poison cloud as well which once again anything that poisons with this build we want to be a part of so this guy is definitely worth it he is a little bit high on the fp cost at 124 but if you have the fp which with this build you're going to you are going to thoroughly enjoy how he fights his bobbing in and out he almost is the black knife tiche of perfumers if i could be so bold as to say that so these are going to be the three summons that we're going to use for this build that i feel are going to exemplify this build just a little bit more and help you out in the long run in your new game plus run and now let's move on to the aesthetic the armor that we're rocking in this particular build we're going to be rocking the marionette soldier bird helm this is the only helm i found that looks very close to a plague doctor helmet and let's be real i know it looks a little bit ridiculous it's not my favorite helmet but it's the only one that could go on with this particular aesthetic so this is the one that we are using the next piece is going to be the knight's cavalry armor i've used this in a build before but there are very few black cloaks that look as good with big beefy armor as this one does so this one takes the cake we are then using the beast champion gauntlets for our hands and then for our legs we are using the beast champion greaves Overall, this whole set's going to give you a medium load and poise at 58. If you want to know what stats I'm rocking with, I got Vigor at 61, Mind at 30, Endurance at 60, Strength at 22, Dexterity at 75, Intelligence at 7, Faith at 30, so we can use some of our incantations, and Arcane at 70, with a total level of being level 277 at the beginning of New Game Plus 5. And the very last thing that we're going to go over here for this build, guys, is the Flask of Wondrous Physic, which is going to have in it the Green Burst Crystal Tier, which is going to temporarily boost Stamina Recovery Speed, and your Stone Barb Cracked Tier, which temporarily makes Stance Break easier. With the amount of swings that you're doing with these double weapons and with the single weapon that we're using, this just makes everything a lot easier to get your swings off, and having stance break being easier is always a plus when you have a build where you're not using great swords or colossal weapons or anything along that line. And guys, that is going to be it for the video. I really hope you guys enjoyed. I absolutely loved finding this build, making it, and letting you guys know about it. So if this is your first time here, make sure to hit that subscribe button, smash that bell notification. It helps me out with the content, lets me know that you guys like what you're seeing. Also, hit that like button because who doesn't like a video being liked? So guys, per usual, until next time, stay safe, enjoy the game, and I'll see you in the next one.